Hey, what's up, world? Checking in. I'm your host, Twin GQ, here on our platform on a culture conversation. This is our final episode of our second season, season finale. Today, we have a special guest with us, Chester Taylor, owner of TCFW Performance Sports Academy. Um, welcome to the platform. What's up, bro? Uh, Thanks for coming by, man. Thanks for having me, man. For sure, Always for sure. Pleasure. So, um, Today we want to kind of get into a little bit of talking on the importance of health in regards to um, the pandemic and uh, obviously for entrepreneurs, you know, um, balance and, you know, uh, health goes hand in hand with your performance and productivity in your uh, work field. So um, before we get into that, man, I wanted to kind of check in with you and uh, give you an opportunity to kind of like introduce yourself to our platform. All right. Um, first of all, my name is uh, Chester Taylor. I'm the owner of TCFW Sports Academy, formerly known as TCFW Performance. Um, I run my facility um, now out of Pickering on the east side. We we're located in Scarborough uh, at first, and uh, you know we ended up moving our gym to Pickering. Um, a little bit of a sidestep, uh, lateral move, in transition to uh, prepare, preparing for our next step. So. Uh, we pretty much train a lot of athletes, uh, you know, a lot of the youth uh, in the city. I'm kind of known as the, um, I guess, uh, Scarborough's uh, dad or Scarborough's stepdad, where <laughs> I take, uh, you know, I take all the youth and all these players and, you know, I put them through the process and, you know, coach them up and uh, start to uh, get them, uh, you know, get them going. So it's uh, it's been a, a fun ride. Um uh, you know, and you've kind of been uh, with me side by side and sometimes on the sideline just kind of observing. Uh, you know, we started with Good Life and, yeah. you know, top trainer at Good Life for, uh, uh, I guess, a few years. Or turned down management, yeah. right? And then decided to run my business instead of somebody else's. So it's been a great ride. Um, you know, a lot of certifications, a lot of money spent along the way. Investments, bro. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know um, if I can count the amount of money I spent on it, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't change it for the world going back. A lot of, a lot of on-the-job training, a lot of learning experiences, uh, uh, experimenting on our own bodies and, and, you know, trying to figure out the right formula, which I think we kind of have. Yeah. Uh, you know, playing pickup basketball as well. So it's a bunch of things, but um, I'm pretty much uh, happy, uh, you know, uh, helping the youth, teaching them the proper uh, movement patterns when they're training, how to how to rest, how to recover, and how to prepare just for everything in general. So it's, uh, you know, the business has got, it's taken a, a large step towards the right direction. Um, I would say, yeah, in 2021 should be, uh, you know, an interesting year for us. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, you know, you're doing incredible things. I kind of wanted to get into, obviously, for the audience, people that don't know you or haven't studied you closely, um, just kind of explain the process of, you know, when that moment hit you that you needed to start your own business. Um, we spoke about, you know, working for somebody else at uh, Good Life, which is a top uh, training gym facility in, in the city of Toronto and or even in Canada and now mm -hmm. kind of like just you know finding out the importance of ownership and uh, starting your own thing well um, I always knew I wanted to train elite athletes and you know coming into good life you know I, I want to you know shout out good life and shout out Kelly for teaching us how to sell um, going into good life I told myself I wanted to train the elite athlete when I got to good life I realized we had to train you know the regular regular people and serviced our, our, our regular clientele which was a great learning experience for me um, I had clients start at the age of 15 uh, oldest client was about 77 Ronald you know who that is our yeah. you know shout very good guy Ron. shout out to Ron um, and I, I decided that uh, you know I wanted to just continue to build and then I said to myself, one day, it must have been year four, it was like August, and we're coming up to November, which is the second January of every year when it comes to training, right? January being New Year's resolution, yep. September being, oh, you know what, I've gotten a little chubby in the summertime, I want to get, uh, get going. So it was September, I knew we were gearing up for um, uh, a top month of selling like we always did because we were pretty much top club for a while, um, and I said... I got trainer of the month that month. I got trainer of the month October. And I was on my way to getting trainer of the month November. I was like, you know what? This is it. This is it. I'm done. And I, I never, like, checked out as far as, like, you know, not servicing my clients. But I knew I was bringing in about 40K, 20, it was 20, 20 to 40K sometimes. You know, you, you get $10,000 a sale. I only made I only made 10% of that. And I was like... You know what? 
I know how to organize my business because we have to do a business plan every month, organizing yourself on the 15th. And I just said in November, I'm not going to renew my clients anymore. And going into the new year of 2018, I'm going to open up my own business. Damn, so it's a crazy journey. So um, you leave good life now and, you know, you start your own company um, in Scarborough. What was that transition like from like, you know, putting everything together yourself, marketing yourself, oh, man, getting clients, yeah. mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, just starting something new that yeah. you've never done before? Yeah, well, it was interesting. I mean, in regular, when, when you're an employee, uh, you know, you make it, you make a bad decision and it doesn't cost you anything. As an entrepreneur, you make a decision that costs you an average of about $15,000 a mistake, right? So I made a $15,000 mistake the first month. I had, um, I had a, some guys who were about to sell me some equipment. I, you know, I paid them up ahead, you know, because I was green. They were the guys I was renting from. Um, uh, just a little backstory on that. I, I rented the spot that I was at, and then they went belly up. So I ended up taking over. So I was supposed to get some equipment from them. They ended up just emptying the place out. Yeah, so I had to pay rent, um, and you know I was like, "Whoa!" You know, I talked to the landlord. Landlord's like, "Hey, man, you know it's a good thing we spoke to you, but we're not going to give you any breaks. Um, we're going to need the rent on the first. So I had to grind. Good thing. The, the one thing there was I created this program called Carnival Fit, and it brought in a lot of revenue for us. I'm talking like, I don't know about yeah, it was about fifteen hundred a week we made off of that. So I was able to pay the rent. I partnered with, uh, you know, uh, one of my friends. She was in, uh, you know, in, into carnival stuff. And so she was able to bring in a lot of clientele. So we brought that in, made a little bit of money, recovered from that mistake. And then I had to buy equipment. So a lot, my first couple months, the gym was empty. All we had was a turf and a sled. Um, and then like a couple weights, right? I kept the place clean, but I had to, uh, I, I basically had to just work, 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 reinvest work, 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 reinvest. And, you know, I got locked out a few times in my first year, but I figured it out now, you know, we're looking to expand. Yeah. So uh, talk about that, um, you know, importance of investing in yourself and, you know, reinvesting in your business. We see uh, a lot of entrepreneurs out here, you know, they, they're in business to make money and mm. to do good in their respective fields, but they turn a blind eye or deaf ears on the importance of investing or reinvesting back into themselves. So just uh, talk about that a little bit. Oh, that's a, that's a big thing. You're always reinvesting in yourself. And if you're not, um, you're not thinking about the end game. Um, I never thought about the end game um, until actually I became an entrepreneur. So you think, you know, you're going to just start your own business and you're just going to make money. Well, there is, <laughs> that's just the start. The first thing you want to do is you make the money right? Then you have your expenses. So there's gross and there's net. Gross is what you make before you pay your bills and before you get taxes. So I, so I started grossing all this money. And then when I started paying out, I realized that there was a need. You can't charge um, uh, people a lot of money unless your gym or, or your, your, your business has, you know, great optics. So I was big on the optics. Like, I, I have to make it look this way. I have to make it that way. The color has to look this way. The color has to look that way. This has to be this kind of equipment. But I never had floater cash. Some people start with floater cash, and some people get loans. I never had that. So up to this day, I'm not, I'm not in any debt. Um, and what I did was I learned um, two lessons. The first lesson I learned was uh, once you reinvest, people start to um, enjoy the business, and they start to feel comfortable. And they're like, oh, this guy's growing. Oh, this is great. Some clients may leave because of your money. Oh, I don't want to pay this much. But then they'll go pay double somewhere else. At uh, F45, oh, one my. of these uh, reputable established brands. Some of these other places charge like triple what we charge. And I believe in the quality of work because I've, in my old, my location, we spoke about obviously being top trainer. Um, at that location, I started boot camps. I started TRX. I started a lot of the team training. So I was the guy at that club. So coming into my gym, I knew how to create that, right? Starting a class, starting a group class is nothing. Prospecting or gaining clients was nothing. Or bringing, pe bringing in leads wasn't a thing for me. Um, the challenge um, as a trainer, I guess, was, um, I guess, sustaining all of the clientele, right? So, and that's what I said. When I, re when I reinvested my money into myself, I wasn't really banking anything. I would break even, always. Sometimes I would have to borrow some money to make sure that I was 
you know, uh, paying my rent. Um, but then, then I learned the secret. The secret, um, which I'm not going to say too much, is not um, members and it's not boot camps and it's not one-on-one -on -one personal training. Um, I'll give you a little, little hint on it. What it is, is you want to set an amount of money that you want to make um, for the hour and make sure that you're getting that, finding a way to do that. So let's just say, for instance, I don't know, I wanted to make uh, $500 an hour as a trainer. Well, you're not going to charge one-on-one -on -one for that, but you have to figure out a way to get that in the door, right? So I'll just leave that right there. Yeah, and uh, to all you trainers or entrepreneurs out there, it's very important to simplify what you're doing. Yes. You know, don't try to complicate things. <laughs> Write things down, you know, put things in, in stone. Sometimes it's better. It makes it easier instead of telling yourself, like uh, Chess said here, you know, I need to mm -hmm. make $500 in one hour. Mm -hmm. You know, think about ways or revenue streams yep. that can help you uh, attain that mm -hmm. desired goal. So um, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about uh, competitors within your industry. So I know you, you know, went from Good Life into uh, Scarborough. So now that you're entering a new market in Durham, um, what do you think separates you from your competition? Well, that's a great question. Um, leaving Good Life being a regular general club, um, I realized that I needed to be different. I wasn't going to get people walking in and saying, well, you know, I want to want to train here because the optics wasn't there. Yet. So I had to turn my gym into something else. And it goes back to my first vision um, of wanting to train elite athletes. So I wanted a training facility, which is where I came up with the first name of TCFW Performance. I wanted to have a performance based gym where I could make um, the regular athlete or the regular person perform to the highest level, have it be boot camp, have it be uh, just general workouts, have it be um, on court, have it be on field, on ice, um, or any form of sport that they want to do. So um, I decided that I wanted to have a business that uh, uh, met those needs. Um, so what I did was educated myself, first of all, because if you want to sell a product and you don't believe in the product, the person that you're selling it to won't believe you as well. So I educated myself as much as possible. Um, then I said to myself, what is my niche? What do these athletes need to be successful? Um, I educated myself again. So I became a weightlifting coach. I became a TRX coach. I became a kettlebell instructor. Um, I became a fascial stretch therapist. And I found that when I became a fascial stretch therapist, I understood the body. I understood posterior chain. Um, I understood the anterior parts of the body. I, understand, uh, I understood hips, glutes, ankle mobility, biomechanics. Um, it, was, it was a big thing. So what separated me from the general gym and my competition, to answer your question, was we became a performance-based gym. And in a pandemic, we are now a stage two business that can stay open when other gyms have to close. Just based on the fact that we train elite athletes and they're considered um, uh, essential employees to go back to work. So we're an essential service in stage two. Wow. So you're able to set yourself up going forward um, in the course of the pandemic. Yes. Yes. We are depression and recession proof. Mm, that's that's big. So um, talk about the importance of obviously um, when you first started, you had a gym that was in the inner city, um, mm -hmm. Scarborough. So for a lot of people that don't know, Scarborough is... Uh, cultural hub on you know the east end obviously yep. lower you know income levels and stuff like that yep. so talk about servicing people in that community i know you did a lot of stuff with the youth yeah um so just talk about the value in investing and in, in serving the community through your work well i mean we're both scarborough guys and we know when you mention the name scarborough anywhere in the city people are like uh why there i'm not coming there i'm not doing that I decided to open my gym in Scarborough because I, I said to myself, well, if people look at that stigma and that's the way that they think of um, you know, that demographic, I want to change that. I want to bring change. I want to bring forth something that was born and bred there. So my first year, it wasn't that vision uh, wasn't really carried out because I had to just figure out how to stay open. Yeah. But I partnered with a few different people, um, you know, Toronto New Step, shout out my boy Omar. Um, and... When I made that partnership with a few guys, I realized that they were doing the same thing I was doing. 
So I was able to create that platform from my gym um, and then bring these athletes in, create a program for them and kind of monitor and see uh, the work that we were doing by also coaching them outside of the gym. So that started to give us a lot, a lot of um, publicity. And we were getting very popular based on the fact that these guys were winning, right? Once we started to get those wins, people were like, whoa, what's going on here? Where is this place, right? Um, and FYI, I haven't even, I've never paid for marketing for my gym. Um, it's all been Instagram-based uh, and just word of mouth. Word of mouth. Referrals too, a lot. Referrals, yeah. yeah. A lot of people say, yeah, you want to go here? They come in, right? So shout out to people who are referring. I appreciate that. Um, shout out to Instagram um, and all the people who are forwarding, who forwarded my posts. Um, but yeah, like, so once we got there, I knew I was onto something. The pandemic happened. Um, we had to close for a bit. And when stage two happened, we were able to open. And we had, it was a rush of business. Like we, that's when we create kind of, really solidified our name and really solidified what we were about. I had NFL guys and NBA guys, Division I guys. I'm talking like pro guys coming to my facility, right? And that's something else I learned. I learned how to make money when I, while I was sleeping. So my facility is a 24-hour facility. So what I do was I gave these elite athletes access. So they would come in like 12, 30, 1 p.m., get their work in, leave at like two, three in the morning. I'm watching them on camera. They have automatic access. I can, I, I can access, access it from my phone and watch, watch everything. So that was big for us. Um, and that's what now transitioned uh, to Pickering. So I said, hey, if I can make it in Scarborough, where everybody kind of is like, oh, you know what? Forget Scarborough. They kind of shit on Scarborough. Yeah. Uh, I can make it anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And um, talk about that perspective, man. Obviously, being a Scarborough native and mm -hmm. trying to, you know, be or end generational curses. Uh, what do you think the reason why Scarborough has, you know, a negative connotation to it? What would you think? You know what? I don't even know. Like, it's hard to say. Um, I just know it's there. And, you know, I've lived in a couple places. So as a kid, I moved from Scarborough to Oakville. So that was culture shock for me. Then I moved from Oakville to Brampton, where I met some amazing people. And then I decided to move back home. With all of the knowledge that I gained from moving to those different places, I wanted to give back to the youth. Because I never had any of that. And, you know, to be an entrepreneur in the city, um, that's something that I wanted to do. That's one of the reasons why I, I do what I do. I don't do it for the money. I do it to actually, obviously, you need to make money. Obviously, you need to pay the bills. And you, know, you need to have something in your pocket to sustain. But... I do it so a youth, you know, guys like us can see and say, he made it. I, there's something else I can do. I don't have to turn to the streets if basketball doesn't work out, right? So I don't know why Scarborough is looked at as, you know, well, like dead end or any of that stuff. But most people want to leave, right? They want to get there and they want to leave. Um, I, I, it was bittersweet for me to close my Scarborough location and move to Pickering because I felt that, I was leaving, but you know what? There's some big things coming in the new year where we're going to remedy that, that feeling. But I just, I just don't know why that stigma is there. I mean, there's so many good people. Like, we're both Scarborough guys yeah, doing our thing, sure. sitting here right now, right? Absolutely. So it's like, how do you, you know, I don't know. What do you think? Do you, do you I mean, I feel like, um, you know, a lot of people coming up in that era mm -hmm. or that generation had a lot of personal, like, shortcomings. Yeah. So, you know, when they see guys that are coming from the new school and the, new, the leaders of the new school, yeah. um, you know, they might not have those same opportunities or yeah. they might not have those same, um, you know, aspiring dreams. Yeah. So it's like I refer to the, the crabs in a bucket mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, they see somebody doing good and they don't want him to do better than them. You know? Oh, we so, definitely face that. We yeah. definitely face that. Yeah. I mean. So I think that, that, that uh, you know, obviously, and uh, they don't really have, you know, a lot of things going for them. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Um, you know, I say that to say this, right? We're, we're, we're both sitting here on the platform and, you know, we're, we're giving each other our flowers, man. But yeah. The one thing it is, is paying it forward, you know, for the 100%. youth. 100%. And, you know, I think there's importance that you said there about, you know, serving first and the money will come. 100%. And that's, that's my thing. Like, uh, there's... You know, there's there, our forefathers or people that did it before us, you know, they helped us and there wasn't a cash value there. But like you said, like a lot of times some people just they want to make it so bad that they just forget that you have to do things from a helping place. And, you know, like you said, everybody had shortcomings. Like, I, you know, my personal life, like I felt like I, lived, I was in 
hell on earth for 19 years. And, and I finally woke up and I was like, whoa, you know, the world doesn't owe me anything, right? It's my job now to go and take what belongs to me. I can't worry about what uh, people are saying or being liked or, you know, popularity or any of that. You just have to have a plan and stick to it. Like, you know, we, you know firsthand that for me, my motto is clean heart, clean soul. Yep. Right. And then just keep going. Right. Regardless, people, regardless of what you do, you could be a guy that's out here, you know, handing out food free every day, not charging somebody. People are going to be like, well, this, well, the food's not good. So why is he even doing that? <laughs> right. <laughs> Why are you giving away free food? This guy's giving away, and so there's, regardless, or you could be a friggin' career criminal, right? And people will say, oh, you know what? Whatever, I like this guy. Look, look, see, I bring this guy around. But so it's like, what, what do you do? Yeah. What do you yeah. do, right? So for me, I've stuck to one thing. It's got me this far, and I'm just going to keep doing it. Uh, that's, I just have to keep doing what I'm doing. People love you, hate you for the same thing. Right. I'd rather that than be like, oh, this guy's done this, 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 this. No, no, no. They love me and hate me for the same thing. Yeah. Right. I demand a high level of work ethic from everybody because I demonstrate it myself. And that's the way that um, that's that's the way it is. Right. If I have to yell at you, I yell at you. Right. It's not that I hate you. If I'm yelling at you, I actually like you. Yeah. You care. Right. It's coming from a good place. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I wanted to turn to, you know, um, partnership. Obviously, you spoke about earlier in your business career, you had, you know, acquired a lot of uh, partnerships from mm -hmm. uh, New Step. So mm -hmm. what are some characteristics you look forward to when, you know, locating or identifying a future or potential partner? Well, the main thing is a plan and a vision. Um, that's the thing. You, if you can't come to me with a serious plan, then I can't commit to that because you have to have something that you want to accomplish. Right. That's the first thing Two, loyalty. Loyalty is big for me. People will say whatever they want to say about you and do all these different things. Because, no, like I said, not everybody's going to like you. But you have to be able to now listen to what people are saying and then approach somebody and say, you know, you know what, this is what I'm hearing. How you feel about this? How you feel about that? Let's, we laugh about it. Or, you know what, yeah, this was going on or this, this wasn't going on. Okay, whatever. We got a plan anyways. Let's keep it moving. Because what's in front of my face is what I believe. Right? Three. Um, you got to do things from your care in place. You got to be, we have to have the same mindset. So I guess mindset would be three. Um, and, uh, just four, just the dedication to, to want to see it through. That's important. You have to, you have to want to see something through, right? We talked to, I see all these different memes on Instagram. What does this say? It says, well, this is your plan. You want to go like this, but this is how the journey is. Well, you got to be prepared for that bumpy ride, Right. You got to know the bumpy ride sometimes is a lesson, right? You're not necessarily um, going to make it on time, on your time. You're going to make it on the time that you're supposed to make it. So learn from those lessons and kind of go. So I, I just watch, right? I watch people. I don't want people to switch up and do different things. Like if we have a plan, we have a time, like, you know, let's get there. Let's get it done. So I look for those things. And I think that those things build a strong partnership especially committing to the end game. That's a big thing for me. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people out there, um, you know, I always like to refer to the phrase um, instant gratification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they, 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 they work hard for one day and they want to see results that same minute. Well, things are a process. Right. You know, and sometimes the best way is delayed gratification. Oh, man. You know, um, I think it was Meek Mill that said it once. It's it's hard to tell a kid in this generation it takes seven years to become a millionaire. Yeah. Because they'll they'll commit to one thing for for a year. Yeah. And as soon as things don't come on their time, they give up. Hundred percent. And we see that with a lot of these kids, even you know, um, going through the whole college and university ranks, where you know they go to a school and you know they might not be playing or getting that yeah. allotted opportunity, and then as as soon as things or adversity hits, they stop working hard. Yep. Yep, and they want to quit. And that's kind of why I, I am, I want to, I create like a simulation of where you're going to be in my training facility, right? I make things as hard as possible where your mind is just going, like, why is it like this? I don't understand. This is not easy. And I'm yelling at you, 
right? And I, and I just watch. And sometimes I'll, I'll pull you aside. And I'll say things like, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. I'm like, imagine, uh, imagine when you go away to school, what it's going to be like. Or imagine when you play a game, now that you're practicing this hard. No games are this hard. Everything else is easy. So why not just work as hard as you can right now? So when you get to that game and that opponent is in front of you that has not prepared, there's no excuse. And that translates to life. It's not just sport. If you think about the adversity you face in the job, in the job world, right? Getting to the job, you got to be there on time, right? If you're there right on time or if you're there 15 minutes early, how's that looked at? Okay, you got the job now. Are you a team player? Are you able to understand the adversity that you're going to face? You got a boss that yells at you. Are you going to snap? No, you're getting fired. Especially if it's in, uh, within the 90-day period. They don't care. They're firing you. Right? Um, but you just have to understand, I teach sports. Um, sports is my angle to get into the athlete, athlete's mind so that they can understand life and approach life with that same mindset. That's how I do it. That same mindset. Yeah, so, um, you know, I wanted to talk about uh, the future. Obviously, you know, it's kind of hard to forecast with the implications of uh, COVID-19, but what are the futures for, um, you know, the sports academy over there at TCF? Well, um, TCFW's future, is, uh, it's looking bright. I never thought that, I read a lot of books on, like, uh, pandemics and different things happening that kind of slow down the world. And the one common thing that I've noticed is a lot of billionaires are born in these times. And it's just they're born from an idea. I had a few ideas that I had for my business that I didn't know. First of all, um, I own my own gym faster than I anticipated. Going back to 2018 when I left Good Life, I was just renting a spot. I was paying $400 a month. I was training my clients. I was making some good money. And four months in, the business went belly up. So I ended up owning the spot that I took. Now I want to expand. My dream was to own a multi-sport facility. I'm talking NBA court, sand pit, um, you know, practice court, full training facility, turf, branded weights, everything. Now I'm closer than I, than I ever anticipated. You know, and, and, and it's crazy to me because we live in a world where you can't even put that stuff out there where people will support you. You put that stuff out there and people want to tear you down, which is weird. Um, we live in a world where um, us, our own culture, you want to build stuff and, you know, you won't get supported. You know, I, I had a DM the other day of somebody trying to support my, my facility. They're like, yeah, I want to come by. I want to get a stretch therapy session. I want to pay them. What's the membership? Well, this price. Okay, well, can you give me a discount if I pay the membership? I'm like, no. No, you can't. I go, why not just pay the price like everywhere else? You don't go to McDonald's and ask for a discount. You don't go to Good Life and ask for a discount. But you're supporting your own. You're supporting a black business and you expect it's a discount? No way. No way. Yeah, it's crazy because um, we, we had one of our uh, future guests, um, I think it was Antwi we had on, and I asked him about the, the importance of supporting black-owned businesses. And, you know, he said the same thing. It's just our culture is so um, behind with the mm -hmm. way we treat our own ethnic group. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have, uh, let's just say, a, a clothing line, you know, and you give your price automatically within your same ethnic group, they're not going to treat you the same way. Yeah. Um, they're going to ask for discounts. They're going to give things that are not on time. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think it just stems from the mentality. Yeah. You know, and um, like I always say, if you can go into Nike and pay that price just off rip or go on go to Apple and yeah. just, just shop like that. It shouldn't be a problem mm -hmm. if you know you're supporting somebody within your own culture. Exactly. And you're, you're, you're supporting, you're keeping the black dollar circulating too. That's a big thing. And that's been a big thing for me. And you try to support sometimes the professionalism is not there. Like you said, being on time at payments. But on the other end, on the other hand, there are people that actually pay the price that are black. There are people that are on time. There are people that are professional, right? Um, like ourselves that treat each other that way, right? So I'm not going to say that all everybody's like that. You know, we just have to slowly change over to what we need to do. Um, 
you know, and just continue to support each other. Um, and that's the main thing for me. So with the growth of TCFW, it's huge. Um, I'm sorry that I'm being a little bit more secretive. I'm not really like letting things out the bag. It's just the way I operate. Um, obviously, off the record, I can tell you a few things. I just don't. Um, I want to wait until the right time. Yeah, for maybe, sure. Maybe, you know, maybe if I'm blessed to be on the show again, I can uh, tell you when I launch. But we're very close to doing a lot, some special things coming back into the Scarborough area and, you know, doing something, like I said, a kid from Roaches and Rats, a kid that never had anything, a kid that walked on to a prestigious program in college, a kid that paid for his education himself, a kid that had three kids at 19 years old, a kid that, uh, sorry, 21 years old, a kid that recovered from that, a kid that paid off his debt, a kid that, um, you know, didn't make it to be a pro, a kid that, you know, uh, came from the hood, gunshots, side, watching people get stabbed, not eating, stealing, forgetting stealing, hustling, right? Putting hustling down, working, and then opening up his own business and now creating something for the youth. It's, it, it means a lot to me, and it means a lot that people can actually get to see, see what I've done and hear my voice and understand the, you know, the, what, the mind and the process, what's behind this face. And it's not just, you know, seeing me yelling. That's, that's, what it, that's what it's about for me. So to have that opportunity to build something the right way and have people support my brand, like, you know, I'm so blessed to have my clients leave from Scarborough and follow me. I have more business now in Pickering than Scarborough. So it means a lot. And I, and you know, it's, it's been a long time coming. Um, we're not there yet. I'll never stop. I'll be relentless in my approach, but I'll always keep my foundation. Yeah, and I think that's important. Like, you know, I always talk about shared values and just mm -hmm. values and principles. I feel like um, on this road to entrepreneurial, you know, you're going to have a lot of successes. Yeah. You know, but are you going to maintain the same value system yeah. as, you know, when you didn't have anything or this yeah. high level of success? You know, so that's very important that, you know, you kind of stay humble and yeah. continue to keep put your head down and keep grinding, you know? 100%. 100%. It's a big, it's a big thing. Um, like you said, keeping that same mindset, right? Um, it's hard. It, it's easy to just digress or, you know, come off, of your, come off of your path by just, oh, I'm making money or, you know, let's just do this or let's go floss or let's buy this or let's buy that. One of the hardest things is to see money and be like, well, I'm not going to spend this right now because I got to think about what I got to do later. You know, for, for instance, I talked about COVID. In COVID, I made, you know, we made a little bit of bank and it was great. I, I was able to save a bit and then an opportunity came up and I literally took that money and opened up a second location. And I was like, you know what? This is, this is what it's about. I'm not there yet. There isn't a million or 10 million in my bank account. And I still have things to accomplish. You just got to keep going, reinvesting in yourself, betting on yourself constantly. I bet on myself for years, right? And now look, I got people betting on me. That's, that's a bar right there. So we're going to turn to something I like to do here on the platform. It's called Quick Hitter. So I'm just going to ask you some questions and, you know, we can get into some, some deep talk. So, uh, I'm going to start off with, um, I know you're a sport guy. What is your all-time NBA lineup? If you had a starting lineup, you could have five players at each position. Uh, who would it be? Well, Jordan's playing the two. Um, I'm a Kobe fan, but I'm sorry Jordan gets it. Uh, LeBron is playing the, uh, the, the, the three. Um, I'm a fan. I'm not going to lie to you, man. AD is going to play the five. Okay. KD KD's going to play the four. Okay. Braun, and Braun at the three. Braun at the three. MJ at the two. Yep, MJ at the two. And one, one uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's hard. It's hard. But I think I'm going to have to go with Penny, man. Penny? Yeah. Okay, that's what's up. Okay, yeah. um, that's a solid lineup still. Yeah. Um, what about the best era of music? 90s. 90s era. 90s okay. era. Okay, so... Um, From 96 up. I mean, I was a little young, but so I would say 90, 95 up. After, like Biggie, Tupac, going up from there. R&B was great. You know, I still listen to that. Mob Deep was tough. 
um, Wu Tang. Oh man, yeah, nineties. So, uh, so who would who would you consider in that era? Who was your um, your favorite rapper, or who you regarded the best at that time? <sighs> okay, one A and one B. One A Biggie, one B Tupac. Okay, you ask me that next week. It's one A Tupac, one B Biggie, because Tupac has some deep deep music. Biggie kind of rapped about his life. Tupac kind of rapped about like society and like what we face now. That's the difference. That's the difference. Biggie rapped about, yeah, I'm making it, but Tupac rapped about like he was like deep. And that's the difference. You know what I mean? He caught deep with everything. Like, you know, if he was mad at you, you knew it. He was mad at society, you knew it, right? Everything he faced, he, he talked about it. You know what I mean? So that's why I kind of like Tupac. I can relate to it, but um, Bob Marley's deep too. Um, I found myself in the pandemic listening to a lot of Bob Marley, a lot, just to kind of soothe my mind and put myself in a mind state where I felt that I was at a different level of consciousness. That's one of that's one of the things that music does for me. Yeah. Well, so yeah, you gave a lot of artists there. Um, what would be you know? I'll give you top your top three albums in the '90s era. Okay. That was um, on repeat. Okay. Um, Tupac, All Eyes on Me. Okay. Um, Biggie, Biggie, uh, Life After Death. Classic. Right? And I would say, what did I kill after that? Wow. I was a dance hall man, I'm not gonna lie to you. But, um, I would say, I, Mob Deep, Mob Deep, Hell on Earth. Mob Deep and, uh, and, uh, Wu-Tang. I, Wu-Tang was sick. Uh, 16 Bullets in the Chamber? No, the other one, the double album. What was that called? Uh, the last one that came out with Triumph. What was that album called? You know exactly what I'm talking yeah, about, right? Yeah. Um, that album, that album was. What when about Mob Deep's uh, their their first album? No, the Infamous. Infamous is good too. Infamous is tough. They came out with um, what do you call it there? Shook One. Shook One's one and two. Which one was it? Uh, yes. I like two better. Yes. That, that one. Was yes. Like, yes. It, that, it came hard on two. Yeah. Came hard on two, man. Yeah. Um, okay, and then um, song of the decade from the nineties. I guess we go ninety three. Uh, or 90s to 2000. Hypnotize. By Biggie. Yeah. That was, uh, that was your club track. Yeah, that was my track. When I heard that, oh, oh, that, <laughs> <laughs> that came in. That was my joint. That was my joint. Um, Tupac Hail Mary hit too. Oh, Hail Mary. Yeah. yeah. Tupac Hail Mary hit. Damn, bro. So, right? you were, so you were more of a, you prefer East Coast rap over the West Coast. I was an East Coast guy. Um. Before the Tupac and Biggie beef, I was a Snoop Dogg guy. I listened to that album from like Doggy Style from back to front, like killed that man. And so that was a good album. And then I and I became an East Coast guy. Didn't really like the way the West Coast guys were, um, but then I don't know. I just after that the beef just kind of opened up the doors for everything, and then they kind of you know merged, right? So I, I wish those artists were around now because I think that they would have had. <sighs> It would have had some hits, man. Yeah, for sure. And um, uh, what about your top five uh, sports moments? Um, okay, that's amazing. Uh, let's let's go from five. I would say five would be, wow, wow, the Cleveland comeback. Um, oh, from down three. Yep. Jeez. Right. Four, Raptors winning. Two thousand. Raptors winning. Uh, yep. Yeah. I would say three. Just uh, LeBron, LeBron winning his first title for me, right? Three. Now, two would be the Jordan pullback for the shot. Okay. For the last, see you later. Last and num- shot. And number one, I'm going to go back to Brown for that block, that Brown block. Oh, on, in game uh, six. That staple, wipe the glass, got it. After that, championship to Cleveland. Okay, that's, that's dope. And yeah. then um, last but not least, uh, we always end off here on our platform with um, if you had a message to give to your younger self or to you 15 to 20 years ago, what would that message reflect? Uh, be a guard. Be a guard. You'll probably have a chance of going to the league. Be a guard. All right? Work on your handles and work on your J. You're going to be athletic, but work on your handles and work on your J. Right? I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. I probably just finished my pro career. Yeah, eh? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, like I said, I give you this opportunity to share anything with, you know, upcoming of your, your uh, obviously, your business, you mm-hmm. know, where people can get in contact with yeah. you and stuff like that. Yeah, well, um, well, TCFW Sports Academy on Instagram, uh, The Chess Fit Way um, on Instagram as well. Uh, my website is TCFW uh, Performance, 
We are changing our website in about two weeks, tcfwsportsacademy.com. You'll be able to see our, our apparel on there. Um, come check us out, 1050 Brock Road, uh, Pickering, Ontario, right off the highway. We're there. And I just want to tell the youth, man, uh, you know, if you're out there and you want to you wanna build something or you want to get there, just don't stop. Don't stop whatever you do. Make a plan. Stick to that plan. And like I said, just keep, just keep grinding. Okay, guys like me, I've been there, and now look, uh, you know, I have something, uh, I have something that I'm building, and uh, this guy as well. So just continue to continue to work and don't give up. Don't worry about being liked. And you know, I echo on that message uh, to all the kids out there, you know, that you know are struggling or don't, you know, see a way out. Uh, you know, a famous guy by the name of Swiss Beat said this. You know, the skies is not the limit; it's just a view. Yep. You know, don't set limits on yourself. You know. The world is yours and, you know, don't don't be afraid to get outside your comfort zone and and explore new things. You know, I'm 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 not a pro here with this whole media thing, but, you know, we're trying and yep. every every week is a challenge. But, you know, you never know if you don't try, you know, and you don't want to be that guy 10 or 15 years later, you know, living in regret. So, like I said, you know, the sky is not the limit. It's just a view. 100%. And, you know, with that being said, we're you know, we're checking out here on our season finale on the culture conversation, you know, we want to give a quick shout out to all our viewers, everybody that supported, you know, that came through to share their stories. All of our guests are entrepreneurs, you know, topic where, you know, here at our studio, our amazing team, everybody that made this experience memorable, you know, we're really looking forward to building something special for our season three on the future. And like I said, I'm, you know, beyond grateful to be in a position to to share and have an opportunity here to, you know, create a safe space to enforce healthy dialogue for our minority group. So thank you guys. And, you know, like I said, check it out here. I'll see you guys in the new year on season three. Peace.